This example problem is about entries for capital leases from the lessee side. The problem reads, Goodrich has a long-standing policy of acquiring company equipment by leasing. Early in 2011, the company entered into a lease for a new milling machine. The lease stipulates that annual payments will be made for five years. The payments are to be made in advance on December 31st of each year. At the end of the five-year period, Goodrich may purchase the Goodridge may purchase the machine. Company financial records show the incremental borrowing rate to be less than the implicit interest rate. The estimated economic life of the equipment is 12 years. Goodridge uses the calendar year for reporting purposes and straight-line depreciation for other equipment. In addition, the following information about the lease is also available. The lease payments are 55000 The purchase option price is 25000 Estimated fair value of machine after five years is 75000 and the incremental borrowing rate is 10%. Date of the first lease payment is on January 1st, 2011. So what they want us to do is compute the amount to be capitalized as an asset for the lease of the milling machine. Prepare a schedule that shows the computation of the interest expense, expense for each period. Give the journal entries for Goodridge's books for the first two years of the lease and assume that the purchase option is exercised at the end of the lease and give Goodridge's journal entries to record the exercise of the option. So, to find, for number one, to find the present capitalized value of the lease, on a financial calculator you're just going to enter in, there's five payment periods, the interest rate's 10%, the payments are 55000 you use future value of 25000 because this is the purchase option price, so that's what we would use as the future value of the lease. And when you compute those, you'll get 244,866. Now we're supposed to prepare a schedule that shows the computation of the interest expense for each period. That's what this table is right here. So the way this works is in the top right corner, you have 244,868. This number that we calculated right here for the present value of the lease. And then, this is your initial balance. Your first payment is also not on the 11th, it's on the 1st as well. So it's on the, it's the same day that the lease goes into effect. And so the first payment of 55000 you have an interest expense of zero. So the principal, the amount going towards principal, is 55000 The full 55000 So you reduce the 244868 by 55000 and that leaves you with 189868 And then on December 31st, that's the next payment, you would take <coughs> um, the lease obligation from the previous you know, for what we just computed, you would times 189,868 by 10%, and that would give you this 18,987. You subtract that from the 55,000, and that leaves you with 36,013 going towards the principal. And then you just repeat that pattern. And so down here, um, you end up, I mean, this, that's rounding stuff, so that should be a, z that should be a zero. And these are your total amounts. So you've paid out um, three hundred thousand, fifty-five thousand, one thirty-six in interest expense, and the full amount. Again, it's a rounding error, but this would be the two four four eight six eight. That's how much principal you've paid back. Now the journal entries for Goodridge's books for the first two years of the lease our first entry is to record the purchase of the lease. So we debit leased equipment. It's the total value of the lease obligation, the 244868. We credit obligations under lease capital leases, 244868. On the same day, January 1st, 2011, uh, this is our first payment. So we're, go we're going to debit this account that we put in right here because we're taking away $55,000 of the principal against, or we're paying $55,000 against the principal, which is this. So, 
we credit, whoops, or we debit obligations under capital leases. This entry is to record the first payment on the same day the lease was purchased. There isn't any interest. The full $55,000 payment goes against the principal. Then you credit cash for $55,000, obviously. Now, a year later, on December 31st, 2011, we are going to debit obligations under capital leases, this time for 36013 This entry is to record the second payment, and this one includes interest. And we just refer to the table that we made earlier to get these amounts. So the 36013 that's this was our first this right here was our first payment with interest the, you see the the amount of principal payment is thirty six thousand thirteen that's what we're debiting right here now for interest expense you have eighteen thousand nine eight seven if we go back to the table that's right next to our principal payment we just mentioned so you can just refer to this table for your entries <clears throat> and cash is the actual payment amount of 55000 Now on December 31st, 2011 we have um, basically a depreciation entry or amortization. You get this by because Goodridge uses straight line depreciation the estimated life of the equipment is 12 years there wasn't a salvage value mentioned so the calculation is just 244868 divided by 12 periods or 12 years so that gives you 20,406 you debit amortization expense on leased equipment and you credit accumulated amortization of leased equipment now on December 31st 2012 we have our third payment and we just refer to the table again to get the numbers so you you have a debit for 39,615 a debit to interest expense of 15,385 and a credit to cash for 55,000 and this is the exact same entry again at the end of the next year or the end of 2012 for accumulated amortization and amortization expense for those same amounts now if we go back we're supposed to assume that the purchase option is exercised at the end of the lease and give Goodridge's journal entries to record the exercise of the option. So if we come down here, that's what this entry is for the purchase. Now, first, the credit is to leased equipment because the lease obligation is fulfilled at in the full amount, 244868 and you're going to debit accumulated amortization of leased equipment this is the yearly amount of the amortization that we had that was twenty thousand four hundred and six each year and we times that by five um, because the lease period was five years and then this is just the balance of this entry and this goes to equipment because we bought the equipment this is the book value of the equipment and that is everything required for this problem.